Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Yoga Vasishta. I'm really starting to love this book. I've read ahead in the middle and the end, and the instructions are just wonderful. They're just amazing. Huh? But first we have to get through this introductory section because this is laying the foundation. This is giving the context that will be developed in future books. So I'm going through it as quickly as possible. Bear with me until we get to books two, three, four, five. <laughs> There's some real nectar and I'll be going line by line and explaining things in detail. Whereas now I'm just sort of summarizing and skipping over a lot of uh, unnecessary materials. This body of ours that struts about on earth is only a mass of humid entrails and tendons tending to decay and disease and to our torment alone. It is neither quiescent nor wholly sentient, neither ignorant nor quite intelligent. The body is as easily gratified with a little as it is exhausted in an instant. This shady tree of the body is only a temporary resort of a passing soul, whether it be related or unrelated to anybody, or whether reliable or not. Each body is repeatedly assumed only to serve as a boat to pass over the sea of the world. Who can rely on his body with any confidence? The body is composed of flesh, nerves, and bones, resembling a drum without any musical sound. Yet, I sit watching it like a cat. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Huh? We are so caught up in this body. Of course, this conditioning has been given to us by people around us. It's not exactly our fault. Huh? It's something that people have trained us to have. Because when they refer to you, they really mean that body. And very few will address us as you, the conscious soul within the body. But this is the very first principle of real spiritual life. I am not this body. This body is simply a boat to cross over the vast ocean of material life. And who am I? I'm the boatman, or maybe even the passenger. The body is not me, just like the boat is not the passenger. Who am I? Well, that's the whole subject of meditation and spiritual life, isn't it? Who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? Why am I here and how can I get away from here? Because this body is simply a bunch of misery and trouble. From the very moment of birth, it's nothing but pain and disease and suffering. Especially when you get to my age, <laughs> there's always some problem with the body. Huh? It could be large or small, but it's constant. So the whole focus of spiritual life is to get beyond this body, to realize that I am pure consciousness and not even the mind, because the mind really is part of the body. The mind is the source of the body, like the seed or, or sprout of a tree. Huh? And you, you take this sprout with you when you move from one body to another. And then the mind again, when planted in the womb, grows into another body. So this is the problem. We are attached. We are identified with this mind and body. And somehow, through practice of meditation, we have to move beyond that. The wise have little to do with this tree of the body which is beset by evils like harmful orchids about it and produces the fruit of perdition. The body, like a frog, lies merged in the mire of mortality 
where it perishes no sooner than it is known to have lived and gone. Our bodies are as empty and fleeting as gusts of wind passing over dusty ground. We know not the travels of our bodies, as we do not know those of the winds, light, and our thoughts. They all come and go, but from where and to where we know nothing. Fie and shame to them who are so giddy with the intoxication of their error that they rely on any state or durability of their bodies. We all know people who are very attached to their body, huh? like bodybuilders and models and dancers and people like that. They're very proud of their bodies, how strong they are, how beautiful they are, and so on. In fact, they build their whole lives around their wonderful bodies. Huh? But I was just reading on the news this morning, uh, some bodybuilder guy, you know, all kinds of muscles popping out of him everywhere, suddenly died at age 26. Why? Nobody knows. Huh? The body has a certain built-in karma. It's born along with the body at the time of birth. The death is already there within the body. The Buddha says, death is born along with our life. And it shadows us the whole time. But we don't know when death is going to come. It could come today or in a hundred years. We have no idea. It can come slowly by lingering disease, or it can come quickly like an accident on the highway, a plane crash, an embolism. Huh? I could be giving this video and suddenly a bubble of, of gas goes into my brain and I collapse right in front of you. Anything can happen. There is no certainty about the body. So this body is a very unreliable boat. Huh? It's like a leaky old tub, constant bailing necessary to keep it afloat. <laughs> We can't put any reliance on it. And we don't know really how the body even works. Do we know how we digest our food? Do we know how our heart is beating? Do we know how the lymph system works? Do we know any of these things? No. The body is a machine and it keeps its own counsel. There are subtle energies within the body that can bring us to very high states or, if misused, can throw us down into a hellish condition. These things happen to people sometimes accidentally. Uh, there are stories of people spontaneously combusting and the body just burning to ashes. Nobody knows why or how. These bodies are very mysterious. They have their own intelligence, huh? but it's not the same kind of intelligence as we have. It's not conscious intelligence, it's instinctive. It's coded into the DNA or something. Huh? It's a computer, but we have no idea how it works. The medical science is making tiny, tiny progress, but they don't really understand it. If they did, when you walk into the doctor, he could easily give you some treatment that would fix it. But no, people have diseases that go on and on for years and sometimes are never diagnosed properly. What to speak of mental problems? Actually, 90% of physical disease has its origin in mental disease. So when the mind is mismanaged, when it's allowed to remain in tension due to desire and greed, like we covered last time, then there's always some tension in the body to match it. So that bodily tension causes disease. It causes problems with the body's functioning. The body is meant to be free of tension. Huh? Just leave your body alone. Sit down and meditate. 
Uh, use it as a base to attain self-realization. That's the proper utilization of the body. Our bodies are as fleeting as the drops of a waterfall. They fall off in a few days like the withered leaves of trees. They are as quickly dissolved as bubbles in the ocean. Therefore, it is in vain for it to hurl about in the whirlpool of business. I have not a moment's reliance in this body, which is ever hastening to decay, and I regard its chainsful delusions as a state of dreaming. Let those who have any faith in the stability of lightning, autumn clouds, and ice castles place their reliance in this body. In its instability and ability to perish, the body has outdone all other things that are doomed to destruction. It is, moreover, subject to very many evils. Therefore, I value it as nothing, like straw, and thereby I have obtained my rest. So, here is this body. Huh? It's so fragile, it's so delicate, we don't even really understand how it works. And yet, we'll run around all day doing business, using the body to feed our greed and desire, having no idea whether we're going to still have it tomorrow or not. It's absurd, isn't it? This human condition. So the only cure is to rise above it. To understand, I am not this body. This body is just a shell. It's just a tool. A tool for what? For overcoming the identification with material life. For rising above and going beyond this attachment to physicality. As we'll find out later on in this series, this body, this mind, this world, objects, actions, time and space itself are all simply imaginations. They're dreams. And they come into existence because our mind is trying to explain our experience in some coherent way. But actually, there is no coherence in a dream. In a dream, anything can happen. You never know. Huh? Suddenly, things could start to fly instead of fall. Suddenly, <laughs> anything could happen. And you can't predict it. So there's a whole, uh, on Reddit, there's a whole discussion group on glitches in the matrix. And these are about strange happenings that, that occur in people's lives. Inexplicable things, huh? that are mystifying and strange. And yet they do happen. They happen to all of us. Huh? You're in the kitchen cooking. You put down your knife and go get something and you come back and then you can't find it. You look everywhere and it's not anywhere. It's certainly not where you think you left it. Huh? And then you go out and scratch your head. You get another knife and you come back and there it is. <laughs> This happens to people all the time, huh? It happens to you too, doesn't it? <laughs> That's because this world is not real. And the idea of making it solid and real is simply an illusion, simply a hallucination. Actual reality is consciousness. Because consciousness doesn't come and go like the body. Consciousness doesn't suffer from disease like the body or the mind. Consciousness is never disturbed by different conditions in the world, huh? like the body and the mind. Consciousness is never destroyed like the body. Huh? And consciousness never fades. It never dies. It's immortal and it's perfect. So our business in human life should be only to develop this sense of consciousness and realize, I am that. Aum Tat Sat. 
ओम हरि ओम करुणारणवम करदीनु अरुणाचल शिव गीता